Luke chapter 2, verse 16 to 20. Um, and you'll find it on page 100, no, 1,028 <laughs> of um, the church Bibles. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And when all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them, but Mary treasured all these things up and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Thanks be to God. Ask Betty to come up. Pray for Betty before she starts. Lord, we just thank you for Betty. We thank you for the words she will speak to us this morning. Maybe the the words that you've laid on our heart and that we were, we are, we will hear this morning. Amen. Amen. All right. Good morning, church. Good morning. <laughs> um, so the insurance uh, people, they call themselves confused.com. Um, and truthfully, when we pray that the word we're going to hear will be the words from the Lord. That's what it's going to be today. <laughs> um, I kind of have this thing that I got a message from Wendy to speak on something different from what we have for the reading. Um, I was saying earlier that I'm going to just marry both of them together because I just feel that's what God wants us to hear at this moment. Christmas has been wonderful. Now we are the last Sunday of the year. The year is coming to an end. The reading we have just heard talked about the reaction of the people to what was given to them, the message that was given to them. They got a message and they ran with it. Yes? And that's what, you know, I got from that. Yeah, I looked at it this morning and I thought, yeah, it kind of fits with what I, you know, I believe the Lord wants us to go through today. And what is that? Ezekiel 37. And for me, when I hear Ezekiel 37, the first thing that comes to mind, yeah, is that passage about the dry bones. I grew up in a, in a, a preaching society, and that's one song they used to sing, you know, prophesy to the bones, prophesy to the bones, and will these dry bones rise again? Now, why do I think this is, you know, as the Lord have placed it, why is it good for us to hear this today? and to marry to what we have as well. I'll tell you why. We've come through January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and now we are in December. A lot has happened in our lives. A lot has happened. We sing songs, sometimes we don't actually try and understand what these songs are saying to us. The song that's, you know, keep, as I was reading through this, that keep going through my mind, count your blessings and name them one by one. We know the song, don't we? Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. You know, we take for granted what God does for us every day in our lives. There is a saying that you should try and use your tongue to count your teeth. 
that would be a very difficult thing to do. And that's how I look at it. We try and count the blessings that God, things that God have done in our lives, one by one. It will surprise us what he has done. But you know, sometimes we look at the things that are dead in our lives, the dry bones that are in our lives. That's what we give glory to. So you've looked at, you know, the months of January through to December. And there are a lot of dry bones and a lot of things that need to be looked at in our lives. When you look at those things, what do you think about? Have you ever thought about, you know, wow, how am I going to, you know, give this back to God to take for me? I want to read, it's not too long, the, chap, the verse itself, what I want to pick stuff from. So it's Ezekiel 37, from verse 1 to 14. The Lord to, to, took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. He led me all around among the bones and covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Then he asked me, Son of man, can these bones become living people again? And listen to what Ezekiel answered. O oh Lord, Sovereign Lord, you alone know the answer to that. Now, there are lots of things that have happened in our lives. If you want to ask yourself, if somebody asks you today, really, okay, let's take for example what happened to Chris yesterday. If we say, oh, Chris, what happened? We say, well, we went out and we came back and, you know, they've broken into the house, right? And now, Ezekiel was asked, can there be hope for these people? And his answer was, Lord, you alone know. So you've been sick. In the past couple of weeks, I have had the worst flu ever. And, you know, if you ask me, Betty, are you going to be able to speak today? Me, I actually was looking at phoning Tim to, and Wendy to say, Look, can you get somebody else to do it? I can't actually get myself off bed, talk less of preparing for a sermon. But if I take a lesson from what Ezekiel said, Lord, you alone know. You created me. You know my today. You know my tomorrow. Can I really, you know, plan for tomorrow thinking I know it better than what God has planned for me? Can I begin to, you know, pieces my life together and think I know more? No. But the Lord is saying in that passage, you know, say, speak to the bones. Speak to the problems in your life. Prophesy to them. He did just that, and they came to life. I looked at this and I look at the people that were being talked about. And funny enough, when yesterday I got a message from somebody and I looked at it to try and marry it to what is happening in the book of Ezekiel. Now this is talking about the Israelites. But bring it to our world today, we are talking about the things that are going on in our lives. But let's look at the journey of these people. How 
they were great. You remember the time of King Solomon? They had the best, the best of the best. Things were great for them. And then this wonderful, big, massive kingdom was divided. From then on, it's like their troubles never ended. Somebody sent me this yesterday and kind of just makes you think the amount of problems that these people went through, the people that have been prophesied to. That the Bible said they will live, and yes, they live today. But how did they get there? We read about them going through, you know, going through to the promised land and everything happening to the Israelites, and it was like wonderful. Now, um, this guy, um, the um, Prime Minister for Netanyahu, you know, made a speech. And a lot of people don't like him, but somehow some things he says sometimes make sense, if you look at it. He said, um, only 70 years ago, the Jews were taken to slaughter, like sheep. 60 years ago, they had no army. Seven Arab nations declared war on them. There were only 650,000 Jews that had to fight these whole nations that rose up against them. They had no powerful army. They had no weapons. They had nothing. Um, the country that's well, the United Nations gave them a portion of land, yeah, where they are now. 65% of it was a desert. So think about how they're going to plant crops for them to feed and survive where they are going. It says 35 years ago, they fought um, three most powerful armies in the Middle East. And they won this battle within six days. And uh, what he's saying that today, they have an army. They have a country. They have a state to call their own. Um, they have a powerful air force today, a state-of-the-art economy with exports worth billions of dollars. Now, if not for God, think of planting in a desert. It's not the best place to plant anything. But that happened. And today they are actually exporting things for us to eat. It says that they made the desert bloom. They produce, if you look at the story of the Israelites, <laughs> they produce the best doctors ever that gets a word all the time. The Nobel Prize, they've won it more than any country. And this is the same country that was led to the slaughters years ago. They, they went through a lot of things. And at the end of his, it's a long, long list that he wrote. And at the end of it, he says, you know, who's Hamas to scare us, to terrify me? He said they celebrated Passover. He said, don't forget Pharaoh. They survived Pharaoh. They survived the Greeks. They survived the Romans. They survived Inquisition in Spain. And um, so many different things that they survived, Holocaust and all. These are the people. It was when you read about, you know, in Ezekiel, say, prophesy that these bones will live. These are the bones. When they were in the desert place, God picked them together. You speak a word, speak life into the things that are going on in your life. And they will come alive.
whatever we have gone through this year, think about it this way. See, the Israelites had their own journey. The things you have gone through this year, they are they represented dry bones in your life. I want you to just look back at everything that you think have troubled you. Every situation you think was dead. Every dream that you think cannot come to life. And begin to speak to it. The Lord have given you the authority and the power to speak to the situations in your lives. To speak into the situation in your children's life because God gave them to you. And, you know, I always say something to my children and they quote it back and never even knew they took notice of it. You know, like, you are for signs and wonders. You are a gift. You can never be a burden or a cause. So speak to the situation in your life. God created, you know, those things. In, they come. Problems will come. Let's, let, let's agree on that. The Bible did not promise us that we will have no temptations or trials. Instead, one thing that I know that the Bible says, it says they will come. But the Lord himself will work with us through those problems and those situations, those pains, those accidents, those breakings, those illnesses. He will be there with us. And it's for us to reach out to the Lord himself. He's not going to leave us to, to, to drown. I say drown right now and my mind goes to the people that went on holiday and the whole family, you know, almost the whole of them drowned. But do you know what? Even in the midst of that, problems happen, things happen. But we want to be able to say, Lord, you know it all. As Ezekiel says, you know, Lord, you alone know. He knows why they happen. He knows why he allowed that to happen. It is painful for the people that have lost the people. But God knows why it happened now. I'm of those that say, oh, Christmas time, why now? People are celebrating. You know how hard it is for people to save money together to go on holiday and to go on holiday and come back with problem? I'm thinking, you know, that's like, whoa. Could have just said, you know, don't go on the holiday, maybe they will be alive. But you know what, if it was their time, even if they didn't go on that holiday, they will still have died one way or the other. But the Lord knows why. I don't know, like I said, people send me a lot of things. Sometimes I read some, sometimes I don't. But the ones that you read sometimes just are things that God wants you to see. And one of those that was sent to me recently was that, you know, somebody said, you know, he had a vision or a dream where some people died and the person was crying so hardly. Why? Why? And by the time he was asking God, why did this happen? And by the time he got a response, it was, they are mine. And I know what is going to happen tomorrow. So I took them out of the situation. But where we here on earth are asking a lot of questions, why did that happen? God knows why. 
And, you know, the Bible teaches us, you know, the Apostle Paul says, in all things, give thanks. Yes, when we are going through pain, the last thing we want to do is give thanks. I remember my big sister lost um, some kids when, you know, not just one child growing up. And one thing I, I hold very dear is looking after the children that have been involved in bereavement because we tend to leave them out when we are consoling the parents that have lost a child or anything like that, but, or even their father dying or whatever. But the thing is, they feel too. They go through the same pains. So the children in our lives, when we pray for them at the end of the year, we need to know that they themselves have gone through issues that are, they are asking themselves, why is this happening? Why is this happening to me? Or happening to my family? Yesterday we were having a discussion and talking about how children graduate from being nice children in the house and start getting into trouble. Do you know it's the same dry bones in their, system, their household where you see mom and dad crying every day, oh, we don't have this, we can't do this, we can't make this happen. And these children graduate into becoming, you know, horrible people, breaking into people's houses and destroying people's lives. And how do we stop that? Is by understanding that we are not actually dealing with that person per se. There is spiritual entity behind that. So speak a word of life into that situation. And speak life to this situation. Speak life to, to the person that has destroyed something dear to you. We need to love as Christ loved. If we look past the person that is cursing us and say, I actually love you just like Christ loved me. Christ loved me, Betty, in spite of my flaws. He loved me in spite of how silly I can be every day. So, you know, if I go out there and treat everybody the same way, some dry bones in that person's life will start gathering flesh. I remember a sister said to me, say, you know what, when I came back to Christ, I thought everybody didn't like me as a person. This followed the star. If you read today's, um, the word for today, it says you should take a picture and see the beauty of God's creation around you. Uh, you know, if you really look at yourself and think, oh, nobody loves me, or my nose is too big and I'm going to try and make it small, maybe God gave it to you for a reason. How about that? So if you look around, you will see beauty of God's creation. But when we look, you know, in our own negative eye, we will not see that beauty. But let's look at everything with the beauty, the same mirror God have of his creation. We are all beautifully and wonderfully made to glorify God. I wrote three questions down here. One is what has been happening in your life this year that needs to be prophesied to? So think about it. What has happened in our lives this year 
What is it that is troubling your mind? What is it that has stopped you sleeping at night? What is it that makes you walk around and think, I'm afraid of the whole world? What is it that makes you think, oh, everybody hates me just because one person said something to you? One can never equal to <laughs> the vast amount of people in this world. It can't, but in our state of fear, that is what we graduate to. What is that thing? Think about it. And think about throwing it at the bottom of the cross. Don't take it home with you today. Ezekiel answered wisely and said, Lord, you alone knows. Can you answer wisely today? Answer wisely today that, Lord, you know about my situation. You alone can bring this to end. You alone can turn my mess into a message. You alone can turn my trials to testimony. You alone can bring me out of this shame. When the Israelites went through, all, the Jews or the Israelites, how you put it, they went through all that shame and all those problems that they went through. They had no dignity. When they were being marched through the streets to travel and to, you know, where they were beating them up and killing them, they had no dignity. Today, in reality, we live a better life than they did. But I'm sure most of the time we don't see that. It's like that of a person that is praying, oh God, please give me shoes to wear. Then it's, you know, he sees somebody that have no legs. And then maybe then you will think, okay, I thank God for my legs, but still, you haven't given me my shoes. Let's think about you know, this logically and know that God loves us even in the midst of whatever is going on in our lives. The other thing I put down is do we trust God enough to say, Lord, do with me as you wish? Can we? Really? Do you think we can do that? Say, Lord, do whatever you want, even if it's going to mean, you know, my legs being chopped off. Do whatever you want. Even if it will mean me not getting food to eat, do whatever you want. Do you think we can say that? Can we answer wisely like that? Is that possible? When I speak, I speak to myself as well. Because there are things that goes on in our lives that means that we question, you know, Lord, exactly what do you want from me? <sighs> Lord, do unto us according to what you wish. Mary said that and he had a blessing. She was just a naive little girl, really. And when the angel spoke to her, she agreed to be the carrier to bring forth the savior of the world. When the wise men found them, they gave them gifts. And they spoke about the beauty of what they have just seen. 
And what did Mary do at the end? She took everything that he had said in and she pondered. Do we give ourselves time to even just sit down for a minute, even at the end of our busy day, to ponder, to think about what we have just been through that day? But what I want you, encourage you to do today is sit down, think about this year that is coming to an end. We cannot really begin to count our blessings. But think about it. Sit down. Meditate on even if it's one passage or one word that comes to your head at that point, meditate on it. See what God is saying to you. See where he's leading you this year. And let's be grateful and be willing to say, Father, I know nothing. <laughs> Sometimes we think we know it all. We know nothing. He knows the best. He knows the best. I'll tell you a little story about, you know, God knowing the best and we thinking we know it all, but we don't. I had a car once. Uh, I was telling Wendy the other day, I don't like Vauxhall cars. Like I said, we kind of make a general statement about something when actually we had problem with one. Yeah? So I have my hatred for all Vauxhall cars because of Zafira that I had. <laughs> but does it really mean that the whole cars that Vauxhall make are bad? No, that one batch that I had, I think, was just bad. But I just don't like Zafira cars. So I had this car, bought it. It wasn't an old car, so it wasn't a banger. The car was just two years old and gave me the worst problem ever. I could take this car to a garage, they repair it, I start driving along, and the sign would come up again. Ta da! Service sign. And it was really annoying. I'll get, let me cut this long story short, it's a very long story, but I had an interview. So I'm driving down the road to go for my interview uh, in Bedford. I just moved to Luton. I was driving to Bedford for an interview. And the car decided to break down. Guess where? You know that big roundabout you get to as you get to Bedford? It stopped right in the middle of the roundabout. And I'm like, Lord, what is this? And I start crying. I said, Maybe God don't want me to go for the job. But he had a different plan. And I didn't know the full plan. By that time, I wasn't thinking. So I called um, the rescue guys. They came. At the time, I was with Green Flag. So this man came through Green Flag. But he was a local... Um, pick up people. His name was Brian. And uh, for some reason, this guy looked at me and said, you a Christian? I said, yeah. I didn't think it was written in my forehead that I was a Christian. He said, so do you believe God have a plan for your life? And I'm like, yep. He said, so stop worrying. If this is yours, it will happen. I'm like, okay. You know how you're like, okay, yeah, I hear you. Let's get this guy away. Let me see. He said, have you called them? I said, yeah. He said, okay, don't worry. We get your car to a garage, and I will get you to the interview. 
And I'm looking at the time. Time is going fast. But we went. She dropped me at the place where the interview was. Um, they said to me, well, we have actually finished the interview and we have made up our mind to give somebody, but you, did a, you gave a good interview. So we're going to put you in our list. In the next six months, if anything else comes up, we will give you a job. I'm like, okay. I left there like not very happy, dejected, thinking that was it for that. And if you know me, I hate filling forms. So for me to even take the time to fill that form, that was a miracle. <laughs> so I went home and to know that God knows where you will prosper or you will you know, do well, God knew that if I had come straight to this office here in Luton, I wouldn't have survived it. I would have walked away. So they called me, you know, like a few weeks later to go and start in Bedford. So I started working in Bedford instead of the Luton I applied for. And when the time was right, God brought me back to Luton, even before the six months they gave me was up. See, we look at what is happening here and now without, you know, looking back, without knowing what God's plan is. The managers I worked with in Bedford at the time, I used to call them my, my fairy godmothers in probation. So it's the same probation we have been working since 2006. If that is not God... And at each time, these same women that I worked with then, they've now become you know, very big in probation now. Anytime I'm going through anything, what can I do? How am I going to handle this? I pick up the phone and phone them. See, that is God preparing the way. But for me, I didn't see it at the time. So what am I saying? We need to you know, say yes to his leading. And when I even got this job, God was saying, I was still doing a second job. And then I felt the Lord saying, resign from that job. I'm like, Lord, that money, this money here is not enough for me to pay my bills, so I can't resign. And the more I hear it, now at the end, in 2006, um, December, 13th of December, I put in my resignation in London. And guess what? I didn't know whether they were doing pay review stuff going on and they were not getting through here in probation at the time. And as soon as I put in my resignation, we came back from December holidays. Guess what? Pay review came through. And my pay here, I work part-time, okay? And they were paying me 600 pounds and I was... It's not enough for me. And the pay, like, doubled. And I was more than doubled. And I was being paid what I was paying, you know, here, driving less time and getting more. So trusting God and saying, yes, Lord, do according to what you want to do in my life. So it brings, it brings relief it actually releases you from so many shackles that you don't know. So, please, as I speak, and I would like to just say, those things that are hanging, that you don't know how, how to handle them or what to say to them, it's time to say, Lord, Please do according to your will. He has numbered your days in his hands. You actually have no control over that. He's got total control over your life. It is time to say, Lord, I am here. Do unto me as you wish. And at the same time, you know, 
go out and tell others about your life. Just like the wise men left there, they went away telling people what happened, what they have seen. Go and tell people, see, look, I did this and God did this. Sometimes I, I, I can go on and say, oh, well, I made a decision because I knew this place is better. I did not. I knew nothing about the probation service. I knew nothing about the work condition, but God knew. I knew nothing about the struggles or pitfalls that were going to happen, but God knew. Let's just know that he has us in his hands and he will make everything fall in place for us in our lives. We might not see it. I may not be saying it because right now I'm in the process of doing another one. <laughs> but I might not see what's going to happen, but he knows. If he knows, let that be good enough for us.